hi guys welcome welcome back to my channel thank you very much for clicking on this video if you are new to the channel thank you very much for joining and if you are a returning subscriber thank you thank you very much for always coming back as you guys would have seen by the title we're doing yet another physio related um a video today we're gonna be going through my work bag i have it right here with me this is the bag it's quite massive and it's not the cutest bag out there but i mean it gets the job done um i was given this bag by my employer when i started the job along with the equipment that is in the bag i think 99.9% .9 of everything in there was given to me with the bag so i'm just gonna go through it and show you guys what i have and i hope you guys do enjoy this video first up we have this box of gloves it's a normal size box of gloves um so we normally use these when we go out to see our patients at their homes or if we go see patients at the old age home real care because they do not own or have any like protective gear so it's always good to have a box of gloves for ourselves i don't think i have used these gloves i know they're open but i don't think i don't recall ever using them but in case i do need them i do have them in my bag secondly i have a pulse oximeter pulse ox we use this a lot with our chest or lung patients um, also with patients when we mobilize especially when i see patients who i suspect they might have problem in terms of saturation maybe while mobilizing while doing the exercises i make sure i keep an ox um, pulse ox with me to make sure that i keep monitoring the stats and also when i do a lot of endurance training just to monitor the saturation during that period next i have a visor clearly apparent that it hasn't been used because it has not yet been assembled but i think this was because it was early days there was still covid and just for safety purposes if you wanted to use your visor then at least i had one but i haven't had the need to i haven't felt the need to actually use one but in case one day i feel like i want to use one I keep it in my bag next up we have a goniometer if you know you know still in its plastic because it has not yet been used and I mean I don't know if this is right or not but when I was still a student I was told that when you start working you won't need to use a goniometer much because if you know your normal range you're able to estimate um the patient's range but yeah we use a goniometer a lot to measure range of motions meaning how far your joint can move in space and we can use that as our objective measure for our treatment so i do have one and it's already like bending because it's so squashed in the bag but i with all honesty i haven't used it this year next up we have oil and deep heat so this is used a lot with soft tissue treatment like soft tissue release or massage and this is only so that there's not too much friction so with the oil especially it doesn't okay anika oil has an effect but with any other oil it doesn't have an effect on the treatment but it does help to make sure that that the contact between your skin and the patient's skin is smooth and you're not causing any friction or any like burn to the patient's skin so it's very important and deep heat helps with the pain so it's just an additive step to help with pain on top of the techniques that we use to manage pain next we have a patella hammer so this one i got when i was in varsity it's very big obnoxious and just an inconvenience this one was the one that was given to me so um we use patella hammers a lot to test for reflexes especially in neuro patients if you suspect that there might be uh fallouts in terms of reflexes then a patella hammer um, does come in handy so it is really important for me to keep 
one in my bag because I see a lot of um, neuro rehabilitation patients, which is my current focus at the moment. And then I have this torch in my bag. It's not working, like the batteries are in and I have tried to try and see like what might be the issue, but I just can't seem to fix it. But I do have a torch. Oh man, sorry. I do have a torch in my bag that is not working. And I really don't know under what circumstance because I don't work at night. I don't know under what circumstance would I need one, but it came with a bag, so I have one. Next up, I have these three tapes and a pair of scissors. So I have a fix them all, which is the one that we put underneath, like as the base layer before we put our rigid tape. So that because the rigid tape is so rigid, when you take it off, it can cause a lot of damage to the skin. So this makes it a bit easier to take this off. However, this is the important one because this is the one that provides the support. I also have a K tape as well. So we use these tape a lot in patients with strokes because they are very prone to getting subluxed shoulder. So we use it to try and support the shoulder and keep it from like fully dislocating we also use them for pain management it can also help with supporting a joint to provide pain relief also with sensory input it is shown and it is proven that um, in especially patients with paralysis um, it can be useful to use like k-tape to tape around and try to stimulate um, activation in that area so I keep these in my bag. Next up, I have an eye patch that I use a lot in vestibular rehabilitation. So a lot of times when people, especially with traumatic brain injury patients, they also have visual fallout. So we use patches a lot to try and cover the eye that is not affected so that we can do exercises for the eye that is um, damaged or has been affected in that injury so i always keep a um, patch with me but most of the time my traumatic brain injury patients i see them in the hospital so if i do not have a patch with me there is most likely something that i can use within the hospital to continue with my rehab but yeah eye patch very important next up i have a few masks as well in my bag so as well covid just protective reason if you are seeing a chest patient it is also still encouraged now that if we see chest patients that we have a mask on just precautionary sakes you know droplets can spread in the air during a session a lot of things can happen so it's always better to be safe than sorry so i do have a mask couple of masks not a lot though in my bag just in case i feel the need just in case i feel the need to use one and then i have a mouthpiece in case i do need to perform cpr um i've never had to perform cpr before i've done a couple of training while i was still a student but i've never actually had to utilize my skills but in case i do i do have a mouthpiece because now i think the protocol is that you don't do mouth to mouth with a person because a lot of contaminations a lot of transmission of disease can happen so at least if you have a mouthpiece that can act as a barrier and you can do your cpr without any hesitation or feeling of discomfort next i have this bean bag that we can use for heat therapy so you just put it in the microwave heat it up and you can use it as a hot pack for heat therapy for pain management and just relaxing muscles in terms of if there's any tightness and you want to do certain treatment in that area heat helps with muscle relaxation and pain management and then we just have this this is just for me we have vaseline and hand lotion because if you work in a hospital or in a healthcare sector and you're dealing with patients, you know you have to 
wash your hands after each contact with the patients or the surroundings so hands tend to be ashy so and they don't look cute guys honestly if you're being honest ashy hands don't look cute so i make sure that i keep mine moisturized at all times and also for my lips because i'm currently on medication that is making my lips very dry and chapped so make sure that i stay moisturized all around all around moisturization you know yeah then we have this so this is just a brush this wooden thing that we use a lot for sensation so with stroke patients again if there is damage in the brain there's most likely sometimes damage to any like sensory output so we use this to test for sensation you know different sensory input on your skin to see if the patient can actually tell what they're feeling and if it's similar on both sides so i always have a brush and this and sometimes i just use my pen or a paper clip just for like that pen um needle sensation but yeah i have these in my bag as well then for the most controversial item like every time i have a stethoscope people always ask me if i am a doctor and no guys i am a physiotherapist and physiotherapists also use a stethoscope and i think people are also of the idea that stethoscopes are used to listen to your heart and that is correct but they are also used to listen to your blood flow your intestine and your lungs which is where we come in as physiotherapists this helps to tell us um what could be the issue in your lungs if there's any constriction because of narrowing or any like plug that could also cause um problems in terms of your breathing and everything and we use this to listen so so it helps us to listen to different breath sounds in the lungs which are produced by different reasons but along with this we also use x-rays also as a different diagnostic measure to see if maybe what we heard through the stethoscope correlates with what is shown on the x-rays so this is one important equipment if you are seeing your chest patients but not only your chest patients it is also important when you're seeing patients who have been bed bound or not been able to mobilize on their own because that could lead to lung complications so you need to treat your patient holistically not because they had kidney failure and they couldn't walk you only focus on the mobilization part you also have to consider the complications to the lung due to being in a flat position you know not getting enough lung expansion and all of that so a stethoscope is important as well so that's why i always try to keep mine with me at all time and that's that for today's video guys i hope you guys really enjoyed it and i hope it was informative for you guys please let me know what else you'd like to see that is physio related and i will see you guys in the next video don't forget to like comment and subscribe to the channel and see you guys